Well, hello, third grader, and uh, welcome. Welcome to uh, Lesson 12 of our um, Eureka Math Program. Uh, we're continuing with our work in trying to make sense of these things that we call tape diagrams and how we can use these tape diagrams to help us make sense out of a story problem. And that's what it's all about, you know, making sense of our story problems. And uh, we, we've been for years now working with something that, that we call RDW as a strategy for solving math problems, right? The R for read, which we often do more than once, right? The D for drawing something. And, and, and that's what this is. This is a type of a drawing. It's a type of a way that, that we can model or represent what's going on. So let's take a look at it. We're going to dump right in here with uh, Mr. Ramirez dividing 12 frogs equally into six groups for students to study. Well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Draw frogs to find the number in each group. Label an Label the known and the unknown information on the tape diagram to help you solve it. So the tape diagram could look big and, you know, unfriendly, but the truth is there's stuff that we can pop right in there because we know it. This whole tape represents the whole, right? And we know that, don't we? And the first thing that the problem tells us is that uh, we've got 12 frogs. So let's just label that right away. This little thing here that goes from there to there is just suggesting, hey, that's the whole tape. So we label. This is a, a known. We know it. And we know something else too, right? We know something else. Six groups. We know that there are six groups. So I'm going to put that here. I guess they're, you know, science groups. So those are the knowns. What's not known? Well, you know, sometimes I uh, reread just to get more familiar with the question, right? Mr. Ramirez divides 12 frogs equally into six groups. Draw frogs to find the number in each group. There it is. That's what we're finding. And another word for that is the size of each group, right? We know the number of groups. We don't know the size. I'm just put it like that. Size of group. That's what's unknown. That's what we'll put that question mark for, right? So we use the tape to help us understand and model the problem. Now what do we do, right? Well, we've got 12 frogs and we've got six groups. We can do that fair share strategy that we've done a few times and, and just kind of hand out the frogs. And believe me, I'm not going to be drawing pretty little frogs here. I'm just going to draw these to represent the frogs. One, two, three, four, five, six frogs. Seven frogs, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 frogs. Did we hand out 12 frogs? We sure did. Do we have an answer? We sure do. The model shows us the answer. What is the size of a group, of each group? Two. Number sentence to match? Six groups of two, right? Six times two. Now the, the division sentence that matches, 12 divided by six groups equals two. And this two here, which we also call the quotient, remember that one? Will you say that once or twice with me? Quotient, it's a funny word, quotient. Funny in that we don't use it too much. <laughs> uh, and finally, there are how many frogs in each group? Two frogs. So we found that the quotient was the size of the group. All right, that's an example of how to use a tape to match a story problem. And I'm really happy that we have another chance to do this today. All right, let's try to make sense of this one. Okay, RDW, let's read it. Betsy pours 16 cups of water equally into 
equally, I'm sorry, to equally fill two bottles. Okay, these must be the two bottles then. How many cups of water are in each bottle? So there's the question, and this must be representing the unknown, right? There's the question. Label the tape diagram to represent the problem, including the unknown. All right, we can do that. We know something, right? What is known? Do we know how many cups there are all together? We do. It's 16 cups. So that's what this whole tape represents, 16 cups. We've got it. What else do we know? Do we know how many bottles there are? That's right. There are two bottles. There are two groups, right? Two groups, two bottles. Mm -hmm. What's missing? How many cups are in each bottle? So we could call that the size of the group, or we can call it cups. Sometimes we, we can say per bottle. That's another way to say it. Cups per bottle. All right. And now for figuring this out. Well, we know one thing. There are two groups. And two times whatever the size is of the you know the number of cups is going to give us the total. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's what the last problem was in a similar way. We also know two things. We know the total, 16 cups. So we can divide it by the two groups. And that's going to give us the answer too. Notice how I put a box here. I put a box there so our brains could see, hey, what goes in there, the unknown, is the same thing that's going in there. We're just showing it with two different sentences, one being a multiplication sentence, one being division. Do you have to do both every time? No. But you've got to find one number sentence that represents the problem. Okay. And so now, how do we do it? We could do the fair share. Or you probably know the answer already, because if you split 16 and a half, which you've been doing for a number of years, you know that that's actually 8, right? Two eights make 16. If you wanted to prove it, you could do it this quickly. Let's hand out the cups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Done handing out the 16 cups. How many per bottle? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And of course, the unknown is going to be 8. Statement, there are 8 cups of water in each bottle. In this division sentence, what does the 16 represent? The total. Right? What does the two represent? The number of groups. Right? And what does the eight or the quotient represent? Right? There's that awesome word again. The answer you get when you divide is called the quotient. Yeah. The quotient represents what? The number of cups per bottle. Another way to say that is the size of that bottle, of each bottle. And this is the way we'll do it. Okay, this is the way we can use a tape. When you're making a tape yourself, go ahead. You can, you can draw the thing even before you read the problem. You know one thing, this whole tape represents the total, right? There's the total. And then these are the parts. We're not sure how to break this apart yet because we didn't read the problem. And for whatever unit this first one is, whatever it is, we're going to need to label it, you know. So what are we labeling? Label total. Label number of groups. It's always going to be these parts, right? And label size of group. Now granted, I didn't read the problem, so <laughs> the size of the group and number of groups may be there or they may be flip-flopped. But I just want you to know that if you're using a tape, you can be comfortable putting that tape in right away, right? Because we know certain things. That's the whole tape. That's the total. What we don't know 
is how many units yet and the size of the units but we'll figure that out after we read the problem think of the tape diagram as your friend because it sure can be in your effort to make drawings that match the story problem best wishes to you